So good afternoon, everybody. So as we said, we'll be efficient also in the timing for this presentation. Um, let's see. Okay, so the structure of the presentation, uh, we'll give some fast, quick figures about energy consumption in transport, in public transport. We'll talk about the European project that unites five public transport companies. We'll go then uh, to the topic that was presented in the last uh, presentation by Inge team about breaking energy recovery from the point of view of the public transport companies. So I think that's a very exciting topic and it, I think it's interesting for you to see how we plan to use those innovative technologies. Uh, so that, that's point three and for the presentation. So uh, quick figures about energy consumption. We all know that energy prices are going up by 48% in Europe between 2004 and 2011. In our company uh, in Brussels, um, in three years, our energy bill increased by 36%. That's due to an increase of 22% of the energy costs and also um, an increase in energy consumption because we have more trans, more metros running. Uh, that's a an increase of 20% in transport offer. So that's a good news because we have, we're still improving our energy efficiency. If we look how that energy uh, consumption is divided in our company, we see that uh, infrastructures do consume about 30% of uh, that energy. So there still is a huge potential in improving the vehicle efficiency. We'll talk about that, but also uh, taking a deep look into the consumption of your infrastructures. So why should we uh, focus on decreasing energy consumption? Uh, there's the price issue, the volatility issue that somebody else mentioned earlier. Prices are going up and down and we don't really uh, know uh, what will be the future prices. Uh, but another element is uh, this graphic that you all know, the uh, CO2 emissions that have gone uh, up a lot since the last years. And so energy prices, volatility, and also uh, and, and climate considerations um, have pushed us to uh, start a European project, which is called the Ticket to Kyoto project, to reduce CO2 emissions. So it's a European project, uh, interreg project, with a budget of around 30 million euros, with five partners. So we have Manchester, Rotterdam, Bielefeld, Paris, and Brussels. We are the lead partner of uh, the project, with one idea is that uh, working together can increase uh, the efficiency than, uh, than working alone. So the phil philosophy of the project, so we have points one, two, and three. First, we wanted to focus on soberness. Uh, we know that we consume electricity, but is it always useful to consume that uh, electricity? So first, try to reduce your energy needs with small and easy actions. Once you've done that, you can start to increase your energy efficiency with more technical implementations. And once you've done those two steps, then you can start to invest in two technologies that will still improve your efficiency. But our goal is really to see the activities in that sense, while political priorities often go the other way around. They push for uh, innovative technologies, which is important, but from our transport, uh, public transport company standpoint, we know that we could be more efficient, uh, starting by soberness and efficiency. The project structure is quite simple. First, the quick wins, which is point one. Then focus on uh, stronger and, uh, investments, which are related to energy efficiency and investments in new technologies. And maybe uh, for the point three, our higher level considerations uh, about political context and uh, CO2 strategies. One important point of the project is, of course, to disseminate the information between the five partners, but also to try to uh, disseminate the results to other public transport companies. So the first point, quick wins. How can we <laughs> launch smart actions uh, and have quick results without, without investing a lot of money? Well, the, the, a good answer to that question is ask your teams. Uh, in every parts of the company, people usually have smart ideas to reduce energy consumption, but don't have lots of opportunities to start projects related to that. So um, we try to focus on uh, our teams to find good uh, propositions to reduce energy consumption. 
a first idea done a couple of years ago with uh, what we call the EcoDrive Metro, a reduction of 15% of the consumption uh, with a, a, a quite uh, simple idea. By analyzing the consumption of our metros, we realized that the consumption was very high at very high speeds. Just by limiting the higher speeds of the metros, uh, which did include a small delay or longer uh, duration of the tra transit, uh, but very small, it's about one minute and a half for end-to-end -end of a, a, a metro track. So an increased duration of uh, the transit, but we decreased the energy consumption by 15% which was really what we could call a quick win with uh, this simple EcoDrive project. A second one, uh, a second quick win with the energy challenge we did last year at STIB. So we went to the teams uh, looking for projects. 27 actions were proposed in a competition. Why did we do a competition is because I think we're grown-ups, but we like to compete and to try to show that our teams can do things right. And so we had 27 actions. Um, with uh, some very surprising results. Uh, so on those 27 actions, 20 actions really did uh, lead to an energy reduction. And one of the three winners was uh, uh, a team in a metro depot. So it was a new uh, metro depot that decreased its energy consumption by 20% only by acting on habits. So why are the lights uh, still on at night? Uh, how could we improve? Uh, the closing of uh, the, our uh, depot doors. So we all agree that these are simple ideas, but even if in a new depot, uh, we have to act on behaviors and a reduction of 20% of a metro depot is a, is a huge amount in euros also, I can tell you. So that's the first part. The second part are investments, which takes uh, most of the 13 million euros investment. Um, we have uh, investments on energy efficiency related mainly to stations lighting. We, the stations in Rotterdam are going to LED lighting in Paris, of course, also. Uh, they're doing some tests to, to improve the energy efficiency. Uh, at Steve, we're working on a, a, a referential to do eco renovations. So in our uh, programs to renovate the station, how could we define a good referential to include energy and environmental considerations in those renovations. Second one is energy production. So we have um, wind energy uh, in Manchester. Also, they have uh, some water energy produced. We're going uh, to, uh, to CHG, so co-generation in Brussels. So we have different investments. They're more focused on uh, new technologies. And the third point is breaking energy recovery, where the five, well, four of the five partners studied that point and will have uh, investments uh, this year uh, in breaking energy recovery. And that point will be explained by, by Mark. So the third part is uh, about the CO2 strategy. So the, the first part, um, we think to develop a coherent CO2 strategies in public transport companies is to be an informed and active interlocutor. It's important to spend time to understand uh, long-term risks and opportunities. The second step is to uh, understand the current uh, situation by doing carbon balance. Where are your CO2 emissions going? Uh, it's not an easy question to answer. It's, uh, it does take time to analyze uh, the situation of your company, but uh, once you've done that carbon uh, analysis, you really can uh, refine your strategy, your CO2 strategy. And the third part we're dealing with in the project is try to understand our uh, European and national contexts uh, in terms of regulations, he, see how they influence us and how we can also influence them to uh, have better uh, strategies. A short slide uh, on the first conclusions we're uh, having uh, for this part of the project. Those conclusions will be presented in June in Rotterdam where we, where we have our uh, Ticket to Kyoto annual event open to, uh, to uh, all of you. Uh, first thing is to understand the political impulsions. We, so in terms of regulations and incentives, when we compare what's been done in Manchester, in Paris, in Brussels, we see that we have many differences due to different legislation. So understanding that part is important to uh, go forward in the best way. 
Second thing, improve the knowledge of your network. So that means understanding your energy consumption, investing in, uh, investing in uh, good telemetering systems. Uh, it's something that might seem obvious, but a few of us had really good understanding of where our energy was going uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of vehicles. And uh, once you've done that good analysis, I think you can really uh, start reducing a lot of your consumption, doing the carbon footprint. I talked about that. We also talked about integrating sustainable requirements in uh, your procurement process. Work with CO2 market mechanism. So is it interesting to start um, trading uh, CO2 emissions? So there are lots of different mechanisms that could be useful for your companies to deal with. And uh, the last point is to investigate in uh, new funding schemes. So we have European fundings that are really done for companies like us who want to innovate uh, in energy efficiency. Or we could go to uh, ESCOs, which are companies specially designed to help us do uh, big investments for energy. But uh, that's uh, the, the nice thing about investing in energy is that usually you have a, a nice return on investment. So those companies are really there to help us uh, do those investments for which we might not have the in initial budget. And I'll leave the floor to Marc, Marc Aumont. Thank you. Thank you, François Olivier. So, um, as was the, the, the meaning of our project was also to study the different technology which we uh, um, employ to make uh, recovery. You have two family, a family with the mobile application, as you can see, supercapacitor, batteries or flying wheels, and also in stationary application. They're less the same, but you can add two other technology, the reversible slip station and the system with compressed air. Um, in fact, the origin of our project was the project Everest. This uh, project was um, a technical and commercial study which was um, made by the VUB, it's a Flemish uh, university in Brussels, and was uh, ordered by the, our uh, government, regional government. And the, the first meaning was to study our tramway network because we have a bigger tramway network than uh, the metro network. And so we saw that uh, the return on investment for this technology for the tramway was too large. And the project was uh, reoriented re to our metro. At this moment, we make a mod modelization of uh, our line, line two and six, what we call the small cir circle ring. And the main conclusion was that for the, the, meet the tram, we was with a ROI of about 15 years, but in comparison with the metro, it's about four, five years. Then appears the ticket to Kyoto project, and it was the, the goal to continue our first project, Everest. And what was very interesting for us is our consumed. As you see, we are consuming uh, 94 gigawatt hour per day, uh, per hour per year, sorry, for the metro. And we have estimated that we can uh, um, reduce of, of uh, a value of 15% the consumption. So it means 1.1 million <laughs> euro per year, and that means a ROE of about uh, four years. So what was uh, our methodology to, to apply in this project? It was two um, methods of comparison, the uh, classical cost-benefit analysis, but also a multi-criteria analysis. Uh, that was new, new for us, that was new also for our for our partner, and in fact we, we were based on this table, and we take in account different parameters, and we compare different technology. And the result of this table, depending of the network. For us, the conclusion was to go to the reversible station. But for um, one of the partners, as a Bielefeld, 
they went to two possibilities, reversible substation or supercaps. Uh, you have to know that for our network, we are the um, proprietor of our high voltage network, so we don't need the local distributor of electricity. And the second uh, thing is that we have no problem uh, to sustain the voltage on our metro lines. So we don't need to uh, collect energy and to, uh, to sustain the, the tension. So the, the principle, you know, as explained by my, uh, for, uh, my colleague of Finji team, so we are directly use the recovery energy to supply either the local uh, consumer in the, substation, in the station or we distribute it directly on our own uh, high voltage network. And we made a tender and in the, the publication we said, okay, we will take the first eight companies, but you have to know that 11 company enter uh, a, a folder, a descriptions folder, and so we took only eight. And for the moment, we are in the discussion, discussion technical discussion to, uh, with the eight company, and uh, we give all our uh, technical data. As said uh, François Olivier, you have to know your, correctly your network. Uh, to, to be able to, to give this uh, information. Uh, otherwise, we have also continued our project address, and now we have a global modelization of our metro line 2 and 6, and we are able to check what the supplier will say. We are not, I don't know in English the expression, but in French we said we are not uh, buying a cat in a bag. I don't know in English. So, and we have developed the, the criteria of our tender based on our experience of this table. So, uh, we, are, we have a, a system with its merge of multi criteria analysis and cost benefit analysis. So, the conclusion of Ticket to Kyoto is. Um, uh, it's a matter to exchange experience between different uh, network uh, exploitation, networks company. It can be a very innovative to reduce the energy consumption, to avoid a waste uh, of uh, energy. And it's profitable at all the point of view as we have seen. For, so at point of view economical, for the environmental, and for also the social point of view. Um, a, a small advertisement for my colleague. We have a conference on Rotterdam, one of our partners, uh, in June, and you can have all the explanation on uh, our website. That's the conclusion for Ticket to Kyoto. For the breaking energy uh, recovery, we can see that many, many companies are investing in this matter. So. I think in the following years, five or 10 years, it will be very interesting, very important subject for the supplier, but also for the consumer. It's very profitable, as you can see, um, but for the tram, we will make also the same um, development, the same methodology, but we are not sure of the technology we will use. And um, yes. We have, you have to make a tendering, a tender very open. You have to discuss with the, pr the, the supplier to be sure that you are taking in account all the different parameters. And then you, have, uh, you can maximize the benefits of your tender. Thank you. <laughs>